Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney and I've been a part-time reseller on Poshmark since 2018. And today we are heading into a film set liquidation sale. So apparently all of these items are pieces that were used for the TV shows, The Vampire Diaries, uh, Gollum, I believe, and the original. So it looks like they have a massive selection of clothing and shoes. So let's go check it out. that again Whew. all right you guys we did it that was by far the coolest sale I've ever been to Ooh, also the hottest check out the hair it was in a warehouse there was no AC there were fans blowing hot air and it was a little bit miserable but it was worth every second they had literally anything you can think of anywhere from like plastic cutlery from like the leftover break areas to like a dentist chair. It was just wild. A lot of the clothing was picked over. I'm sure that there were a lot of uh, amazing pieces the past couple days. Today was the half off day, but I did find an entire Ikea bag full. You can probably see it back there. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. So I'll meet you guys back at the house where there's AC and we'll go through everything I got. All right, it is a couple days later. I had every intention of coming home and filming the haul for this video uh, that same day, but it was Sunday. I had originally planned to do absolutely nothing. And when I got home, I decided to give in to that. So it is a couple days later. It's actually uh, right before I'm about to leave for work. So I'm gonna have to get through this quickly. The liquidation company that hosted the sale was called Peachtree Battle Estate Sales. And I have my receipt here. So like I said, everything was 50% off on this particular day. It was, I heard that the sale started on Wednesday and I went on Sunday. So I think it was the last day of the sale. So if I had gone, when it first opened and got everything, I would have paid $291, but after the 50% off sale plus a 3% charge for using a debit card, I ended up paying $161.85. I got a couple items that I paid up for, some bread and butter items that I paid around thrift store prices for. So what I'll probably do for this haul, since it's not that many items, is I will not average my cost of goods. I will just enter it what I actually paid per item because you'll, as you'll see some of the items, like if I were to average my cost of goods, it would look like I took a loss. And that's not a big deal, especially if you make up for it on the larger sales. But for me personally, I just don't like seeing that I lost money. So it's more of like a psychological, like mental thing. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. The first piece that I paid up for is this men's extra large Carhartt jacket it was in basically excellent condition. And honestly, these don't have to be in excellent condition to sell. Uh, I know Carhartt was a big trend like a year or so ago and may still be where like anything that's like tattered and torn and like really naturally distressed was trending. But this one is in great condition. The only flaw 
if you'd even consider it a flaw, is the Carhartt emblem is missing. Like I said, this was a sale from a few TV shows, so I don't know if maybe they had to remove the Carhartt tag to be able to wear it in the show. I don't really know how that works, but that's the only thing I can think of. Anyways, it's in great condition. It's a men's extra large. It is fleece lined. Zipper works perfectly. I paid, let's see, half of $45. So not a bad pickup. I think when I was comping these briefly in the store or in the sale, it was they were running around 60 for sold comps. I didn't put in specifics like fleece lined or anything like that. So I'll do some more thorough comping before I post this video and I'll include that on the screen for you. This next pair I actually purchased for my husband to try on and they didn't end up working, so I'm gonna resell them. So it won't be a big flip, but these are just a pair of new tags, men's American Eagle jeans. They're the relaxed straight in a size 44, 32. They're a nice like medium wash with some natural distressing and whiskering. That's what these lines are called. They're called whiskering. So it's made to look like you've been sitting down and like wear has happened over time. So yeah, these are nice, just straight leg. They didn't retail for a lot. I think they just retailed for like $40. So yeah, $39.95. And I don't know what this means, but I'll include that in my listing. It's the Airflex technology, I guess. So, well, those probably won't bring a ton, but I'm sure I'll make my money back. I think I included in the footage from the sale what the prices were, but I'll I'll put it back up again here so that you can look. The prices that are listed on this pink sign, they're actually the prices for full price. So what I paid would be half of what it says. I want to say jeans were like originally 15 maybe, so they would have been 750. So again, not a big flip there. Next up is a piece that I found on my way out. And the brand is, I think it's pronounced Enza Costa. Um, I've sold this brand before for a consignment client. It was a, I wanna say like a midi or maxi dress. So that did really well, but this is just a tunic basic tops. So I don't expect to get a ton for this, but at, you know, less than thrift store prices, I figured it was worth the pickup. It is like a chocolate brown color, flawless. I didn't find any like major flaws on any of the items that I found, which was great. And I'm not really sure. Uh, my guess is that it's a mixture of pieces that were worn in the shows and pieces that weren't worn in the shows. Cause I know like when you're doing a wardrobe for a TV show, you have like a whole rack of things to choose from. And I'm sure not everything was actually worn. And the piece that I'll show you guys at the end, I actually did quite a bit of research on before picking up. And I even typed in like as seen on like Vampire Diaries, the originals, like I typed in all of the shows that these pieces were, you know, supposed to be from. I didn't find anything. So, and it's a pretty like unique special piece. So I think that, you know, that specific one probably wasn't worn or I think I would have found it by searching those titles. These next two are a couple that I was mentioning a minute ago that are less substantial, won't bring in a ton, but I only paid, I think, 4 or $5 for these. And they're these Nike Pro, new with tags, little shorts. I know, like, a lot of cheerleaders wear these. And they are brand new with tags. Uh, retail was torn off, so I'm not sure how much those were. But I got that pair, which is a shorter inseam. And then I got this pair, which is a longer inseam. They are small size. Let's see what these are. Yeah, these are an extra, extra small. But I figured with... All those little, you know, tweens and teenagers that are in cheerleading, somebody would want these for four or five dollars. So, picked those up. And those two pieces specifically are why I'm not going to average my cost of goods, you know, because I have like the Carhartt jacket and the piece that I'll show you at the end that were a little bit more. This is another bread and butter piece, but it is a men's J. Crew size small, new with tag sweater. And because we're coming up on the fall season uh, and people are gonna start buying more sweaters here soon, I thought this was worth the pickup. J. Crew is a good bread and butter brand for me. Some more substantial pieces can do really, really well, like, you know, maxi dresses, mini dresses, uh, coats, cardigans, things like that. I've sold, I wanna say one or two J. Crew cardigans. They're like a longer line cardigan and they go, I wanna say it sold for somewhere between like 75 and $100. I'll see if I can find a comp and I'll put it on the screen, but um, I keep an eye out for those. So I've never sold a men's J. Crew sweater, so I have no idea how it's gonna do, but when I briefly looked up comps, it looked like it was worth paying. I wanna say I paid 
like maybe six dollars for this. I, I think sweaters were 12. This was actually the first thing that I found. Uh, the brand is Peruvian Connection and I've sold this brand a few times. It doesn't always sell quickly but it sells for a good amount. So this is a blazer. I'm not even sure. Let me see what the content is. Oh wow, this is great. This is 40% alpaca, 46% wool, and 7% nylon. So this should do really well, especially going into fall. I'm gonna say that blazers were originally 20, so I paid 10 for this. I don't think blazers were actually listed on that pricing list. So when I got up to checkout, I asked and they said it was originally 20. So I thought it was worth it for 10. And that was before I even realized it was alpaca. So I definitely, definitely am fine with 10 being that it's a nice fabric content. So it was so weird. Like you'd think that for TV shows, it would be all like higher end brands and well-known brands, but they had like Amazon essentials and Walmart brands and Target brands and they had things like it was just wild. It was a little bit all over the place. So I'm not really sure like what the process is for finding the wardrobes for these TV shows, but it was just a little bit random. I mean, it, it was everywhere from, I want to say one of the nicest brands that I found. Let me think. Like there was like Alice and Olivia, Helmet Lang. I can't remember, but Specifically, I remember a lot of Alice and Olivia and a couple pieces of helmet laying, but it was anywhere from Amazon to those, so it was wild. Then there were random things like this, which is by Anthropology, size medium. This is just a pair of like blue, I guess you'd consider these trousers, but they are a crop. They've got a little split in the bottom, so they'll probably flare out just a hair when you wear them, but these are super cute, great condition. They don't have tags, so they're not new. They're, they're pre-owned, but um, I thought these would do well. Probably not sell for a ton. You know, Anthropology. when I first started reselling in 2018, finding Anthropology was like finding gold. Like, it sold so well, no matter what the sub-brand. Like, whether it was General Anthropology. I don't even know if the Buy Anthropology brand existed five years ago, but anything Anthropology was literally like finding gold. I remember getting so excited you know, the first couple years finding anything anthropology, it has significantly slowed down since then. So although I just do still pick it up if it's a decent piece, I do not expect what I used to, which would be probably anywhere, depending on the piece, between 50 and $100. Now it's way more bread and butter, typically around 25 to $35, unless it's special like new tags or a more substantial piece. So this is another bread and butter find. Another new Tags J Crew piece. Looks like it does not have the retail price on it. But this is just a nice lightweight sweater. It's got this cute necktie that goes around it. I want to say it's a smaller or medium. Let me see. Yeah, size small. It's this really pretty chocolate brown again. And just with fall season coming up, I thought this would do well. I think I paid five or six for this. Let's see when it's from. And they actually had two of these identical, both new with tags, but I decided to only get one. Yeah, so this is from holiday season of 2020. So not too old. And I think, I don't think it's a style that's like not in style anymore or anything. So this should do fine. What else do we have? So I actually did not look up comps on this because I threw it in my bag and it was at the very bottom and I actually forgot that I had it. It's this really nice scarf. Material is 100% baby alpaca and it was new with tags. It looks like it's maybe from a boutique, but it retailed for $96 and it's a really pretty print. So combination of the print, the fabric content, and the fact that it was new with tags, I thought it was worth picking up. I believe that I paid, I think they said scarves originally were $10, so I paid five for this. I'm hoping that does well. And again, I feel like a broken record, but because fall's coming up, I thought that now was a good time to pick that up. So I actually picked these up for myself. When you're in line, y'all, the line, it took me 40 minutes to check out. It was like the checkout tables were at the front by the main entrance. And then, you know, when you set up like stanchions, so they kind of like when you're going through like security at the airport, how they have like the stanchion set up so people like zigzag until you get to the front. The full zigzag was full and then the line leading into the zigzag was halfway down the warehouse. But I was like, I drove 45 minutes and I spent 
over an hour in here looking for these clothes. I am not leaving with nothing. So I stood in the line. It took about 30 or 40 minutes. When you got up to like the little zigzag stanchion area, it backed up to the jewelry area and they had like racks with those like organizers, hanging organizers that you put like in your bathroom, similar to like a travel bag that you hang and it was full of jewelry. And so since I was standing there anyways, I was just kind of perusing through the hanging jewelry and I found this pair of earrings that I picked up for myself. And I, y'all, sorry, I'm shaking. I've had coffee and haven't eaten breakfast yet. So I loved these. I thought these were super cute. And I did recognize the brand. I assume you say Gorgiana. Does that sound right? Gorgiana. I picked these up for myself, but I saw that they retailed for $50. And when I got it to the front, I asked how much they were and she said they were originally 10, so they were five for me. And I'm probably still gonna keep them, but I figured I would show them to you guys because this brand resells. Like for this pair of earrings, when I did some brief comps, it looks like these would sell for anywhere from like 25 to $35. So if I decide I don't like them, I can definitely resell them for a profit. So keep an eye out for that brand. All right, this is something I don't typically pick up, but I do know that there's money to be made in this category. And this is like a wetsuit top. Did have some full wetsuits, but they were priced up. This one was new with tags and the brand is LavaCore Essential Thermal Protection. It looks like it also has, it says flexible, durable, and water repellent, outer layer, and it's UPF 50, so it protects you from the sun. I did some brief comps before picking these up, and I remember, I want to say that I saw sold comps for, like, this specific piece between, like, $45 and $55, so this was considered a top. It wasn't, like, a special priced item or anything, so I, I think I paid, like, $6 for this. So I thought that one was worth it, and then... I got a second piece from that brand. This one is not new with tags. This one, did I say what size that one was? The sleeveless one is a US 4. And then the one that's uh, pre-owned that's not new with tags is a size large. And this one is a long sleeve top. It's got that little drawstring at the bottom to cinch it in. These were doing pretty well on Posh as well. And the clothing section like the main clothing section was like halfway through the warehouse in the back and I thought that I had gone through all the clothes and I was heading to checkout and then I realized there was like a like a high-end section up near the checkout so I went up there just to see what I can find and I gave myself a budget like a monetary budget and a quantity budget so I told myself I could only spend $165 I spent 161, so I did pretty good. And I could only fill one Ikea bag. So I took one Ikea bag with me and I said, once that was full, I was done. So, um, and I did good y'all. I did not spend more than I said and I did not get more than an Ikea bag. So go me. Anyways, when I was up at the high end area on my way to check out, that's where I saw like the Helmet Lang and the Alice and Olivia. They had a lot of like uh, Terry John, formal gowns, Adriana Papel formal gowns. They had denim like Paige, um, Citizens of Humanity, Seven for All Mankind, Adriana Goldschme, those kind of brands. But if those were thrift prices, not all of them, maybe like Adriana Goldschme, if they were like five or $6 a piece, I would have picked them up, but they were priced at like 40. So I wasn't going to pay $20 for them because comps didn't justify that. But I did, however, find a couple things. This one, did not have a tag, but it was marked at $40. So I'm like, it must be good if they're charging $40 for it. It's not like an Amazon brand or something. So one time I found a shirt thrifting that didn't have a tag and I ended up hunting for the interior tag and it ended up being, what's the brand? Mason Margiela. Did I say that right? I'll put the tag on the screen, but because of that one time, like anytime I see something that feels nice and looks nice, I do look for an interior tag. So I went hunting for an interior tag in this one. And oh, let me show you guys the piece first. Duh. So it's this nice like sweater in this like rust orange color, perfect for fall, long sleeve. And it felt really nice, like really substantial. So when I went hunting for the tag, this is what I found. I am not even gonna try to pronounce that, but I did recognize it. 
I don't have a lot of experience with it. So I like didn't know comps off the top of my head, but I did look it up. This is a size 38. It's 100% wool. So I did look it up and this brand, I want to say when I searched comps, like sweaters like this were selling for around $100. So worth a $20 investment for sure, in my opinion. So yeah, that was an exciting find. It's definitely a brand I've never picked up before, never sold before. So even though comps look good, it could sit for over a year. I, you know, I don't want to call it a bolo yet because I, I don't really feel like I can call bolos out for new brands that I found without knowing how quickly they sell. But yeah, so that was exciting. And then my last and favorite piece is I paid $25 for this. It is this incredible faux fur jacket, long line, and the brand is Major L. So some of the pieces had little like iron on things. So my guess is like this jacket was meant for whoever was playing Maria in the second something. So anyways, this was an absolutely stunning piece. Did look up comps. I paid, what did I say, $25 for it. And I wanna say the lowest comp I saw was $100. Were quite a few that were closer to 200. So, so yeah, this was definitely worth it. I don't know, what is this, like a snow leopard or something kind of print? It does have like a hook and eye closure. Let me see if it has pockets. It does have pockets. And this one is an extra, extra small. So not an ideal size, but when a piece is substantial, I think that it'll do just fine. So that one was really exciting. So yeah, I did fill an Ikea bag, but I had this and that Carhartt jacket, which filled up like half the bag. So I did not get that many items, but I definitely felt like it was worth it. It was, like I said earlier, like the coolest sale I've ever been to. I just had so much fun meandering through like the antique furniture and the props. I'm sure that there were plenty more amazing finds there earlier in the week. Cause I was there, like I said, on the last day, but they had like mannequins and like old dilapidated, like dentist chairs and doctor's chairs. They had hospital beds. They had this really cool, I'll put a clip of it up here. It was like a bright yellow, like distressed danger cabinet. It was clearly like a prop. It was just so cool. So even if I hadn't found anything, I would have been glad that I went, but obviously I'm glad that it turned out that I found something. Anyways, just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content like this, click that subscribe button. Um, and if you want to be notified when my next video comes out, click that little bell. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.